Hello, and welcome to the Monster Painter. This week, I'm dragging Dave up the Grey Mountain. And remember to watch to the end of the video for your chance to win some fabulous Monster Painter swag. Right, so I am going to pour out Grey Mountain here. And Dave is going to dig through this heap of Reach Reaper Bones 5 miniatures. And he's going to pick out five. And why are you going to pick out five, Dave? Uh, I am working on a prototype of my board game that I'm making. It's a dungeon crawl. It's pretty fun. Dave has been working for it on it for like a couple of years now. And it's starting to really come together. And uh, he needs some models for the playtesting. Even though you've done lots of playtesting already. Yeah, we've, we've been playing it pretty regularly for a couple of years and we've been using miniatures that Les, the monster painter, painted a long time ago and now it's ready for some new ones to to, uh, to serve. We're gonna freshen up the play testing with some new models. And we are looking for your, your tropes in characters. We got a fighter, a wizard, an archer, a rogue, and a healer. Do you think there are enough models in Bones 5 to Fulfill those roles? <laughs> uh, I think that works for me. I like that. Okay. Although I do like this one, so you should pay a middle. Uh, there we go. <laughs> All right. Let's take a closer look at what Dave has selected. And we have a human archer, a warforged wizard, a warforged brute, a tabaxi thief, an elven warrior, and a human cleric. This makes for a very credible adventure party for Dave's Dungeon Crawler. So I don't usually paint player characters as I prefer to paint monsters and terrain. It's way more fun if you ask me. But you gotta do what you gotta do. A lot of player models are wearing a lot of armor. So I'm gonna demonstrate my simple method for painting up armor using the Warforged Brute. He's just covered in this stuff. The first step is a simple base coat of dark gray, in this case a mixture of Payne's gray with a pinch of titanium white, and that will give us a solid ground for the next step. This next part is the most fun. I'm going to dry brush a gray metallic color all over that dark gray base. It's a mixture of Payne's gray and pearl white and I'm mixing it so it's a distinctly lighter tone compared to the base coat. The base coat is crucial because the metallic color is somewhat translucent and works much better over top of a dark base color. And with that, the armor looks pretty good. I could stop here, but I'm going to push it and we're going to give this Warforged Brute some proper fine armor. Now for the easiest step, a careful black wash. I am using ivory black for the purpose. It is a slightly translucent black and makes for a great wash. This will create greater contrasts on the monotone armor and will help make the details pop a bit. Now this is a careful wash. We have to pay attention to how it's placed and how it flows because we don't want any dark coffee stained black spots on this brute's armor. In the final step of the armor process, I am going to apply a light dry brush of a bright white metallic color. In this case, pearl white. The pearl white is very translucent, so this will not give any heavy effects, but it should subtly highlight the edges and the details and help out the overall look of the metal armor. I like the result of this process. The armor looks like armor. And now, on to the rest of that adventuring party. So let's get going. We start out with some base coats and then some more base coats and a little bit of dry brushing. Uh, then a bunch of them get that black wash, you know, the armor process after all. And while that dried, I went to town on the cleric's details. And boy, does this guy have a lot of details. He is a fully kitted out adventurer who clearly means business. Next up, it's more base coats and more washes and more detailing until all the washes and details are finished and there's nothing left to do but finish up the bases 
and put a bow on this project. It's time to look at the final product. First up, we have the mighty Warforged Brute, who is now ready and willing to clobber smack anything that gets in his way. And he has a little brother, the Warforged Wizard. I really like the idea of a robot wizard. It is novel and fun, and I think these two are going to have some good times out there on the road. Next up, we have our blonde elven warrior with his fancy gold shield, ready to uphold what is right and good in this dark and corrupted world. And his companion, a mysterious female human archer, this sultry brunette is ready for action and adventure, but will romance spring up between them? Who knows? And who cares? Finally, we come to the tabaxi rogue and the human cleric. Now, back in the old days when I was a kid playing Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, you couldn't play a tabaxi character. Unless you whipped up some homebrew rules, which we did, so I guess nothing much has changed. As for this cleric, I love this model. To me, it epitomizes the traveling adventurer, and when this guy hits retail, he's going to become a instant tabletop classic. He's just that cool. So there you have it. Dave gets a set of fine adventurers for the dungeon crawler he's developing. It's super fun. And I managed to take another bite out of the Reaper Bones 5 Grey Mountain. At this rate, I may actually be finished Bones 5 by the time the Great Grey Avalanche of Bones 6 hits me. Hopefully. Ugh! Look at that! Our lad is all grown up and heading off for adventure! Bah! He's gonna crawl around a filthy dungeon and murder the inhabitants, stealing all their possessions. Aye, and I couldn't be prouder! Me too. Me too. And here are the adventurers in their natural habitat, crawling around some filthy ruins, murdering the inhabitants, and stealing their possessions. Hey, you watched the end of the video. You must really want a Monster Painter t-shirt. Well, you could win this simply by leaving a comment in the comment section below, and then I will pull a name out of the hat of all the commenters, and one person's gonna win this fabulous Monster Painter t-shirt. Unless, of course, your body size doesn't conform to a men's large, and then you can get a fabulous Monster Painter mass rock bag instead. How fun is that? So get commenting, and we'll find out who wins next week. Next week on The Monster Painter, I make some terrain out of this Playmobil tree. Remember to like, meow, comment, meow, subscribe, and ring the bell. Ring the bell!